glad we got a couple kids here to, uh, to, 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 to listen and, and watch and hopefully critique uh, what's going on here. Because this, I was thinking a, lot, thinking a lot about my childhood and, and growing up and whatnot. Um, and I think about my mom a lot too, especially in this, this time of the season, this time of Easter, what we're looking at is how we as a church, how we as individual Christians are supposed to respond to Jesus' uh, resurrection. And that we're still in the Easter season. I hope you see that in the bulletin. This is the second or third Sunday of Easter, uh, probably the third Sunday of Easter. And, uh, and we're supposed to be really focusing on what next. Now that Jesus has died and, and, and been resurrected, now that Jesus has conquered sin and death, what next? I don't know if this, I, I'm assuming everybody knows what this is. What, what, what do you all call this here? I've heard rubber spatula? Spatula, rubber spatula, anything else? Scraper. Say it again. Paddle. You know, you know the answer I'm fishing for, mm -hmm. don't you? Because the part of the country my mom came from, they called this a child cheater. You may have heard me refer to this as a child cheater. Why would you call it a child cheater? Well, here's the thing. Whenever my mom would bake, um, and, and she was a busy woman, she didn't do it often, but when she would, uh, of course, when she was done with the mixing and the measuring and all that stuff, and she had everything poured out or, or, or put on cookie sheets or whatever she was doing, um, the kids, which mainly meant me and my little sister, but she didn't want to count. So mainly me got to lick the bowl clean and got to lick the mixer parts clean. And so, of course, I would watch her very closely in those final stages of battle preparation. I'd watch very closely to see how much got into the pan or onto the cookie sheet and how much was still in the mixing bowl, right? The more that was in the mixing bowl, the more for me. Am I right? So why do they call this a child cheater? Because the more you can scrape out with this, with a spoon you can only get so much. But the more you can scrape out of the bowl, the more the child is cheated. And this thing really cheats the child. Let me tell you that from personal experience. And I remember looking at all those times mom would bake. And I'd be looking at that bowl and it looked like there's so much in there. And I'd be thinking, oh, it's going to be good. And then she pulls out the child cheater and she and she hands me an almost clean bowl. And I felt cheated. I mean, I really, really, truly felt cheated. So I always told myself, when I get to be an adult, when I get to call the shots in my life, when no one is going to be around to tell me I can't do anything, one of these days, I'm going to get me a can of Frosty. I loved it when my mom made Frosty. Going to get me a can of Frosty, going to get me a spoon. Ooh. And I'm going to eat that Frosty. <laughs> Spreading the love of God to different people, 
baptizing in his name and serving people. In John, in John, wow, it's a little, it's a little more condensed. He says, look, feed my sheep. <laughs> now, here's the thing I find interesting about feed my sheep. Obviously, it has a lot to do with actually feeding people. That was important. When we talk about the, the things that Jesus asked us to do, they were very practical things. <laughs> so, feeding, as in giving people food, giving them, helping them with, with you know, poverty, uh, giving them clothing, helping, you know, improve their material way of life in this world, that's very important. It also has to do with feeding people by feeding them hope, giving them hope and, sal hope and salvation, uh, giving hope to people who have no hope, helping set the prisoner free, if not physically free, at least mentally free, helping free them from addictions and all kinds of stuff like that. Everything else we do in the church, all that stuff we put down as sort of mission, as ministry, everything else we do in the church is, uh, well, I used to be on the cake. I mean, it. Let's be honest. Jesus doesn't say in all of these things, he doesn't say, hey folks, get together and build churches in my name. He doesn't say, get together a bunch of really qualified singers and form a choir. He doesn't say, gather all the believers and worship every Sunday morning. He doesn't say, get out there and raise money in my name. <laughs> All of that stuff is great. Do not get me wrong. I like frosting. <laughs> <laughs> and frosting is awesome stuff, isn't it? I mean, it is. Muffins are great. But you put a little frosting on and you a cupcake, and that's awesome, you know? The problem is, it's really not that great to sit here and eat a lot of frosting. It's not what it was meant for. It's not where we're, what we're supposed to be doing. And I have to wonder with all the things that Jesus tells us to do, at the end of Luke, at the end of Matthew, here at the end of John, I have to wonder if we take a couple steps back and look at our church. I'm not talking about our congregation. I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about the Moravian church. I'm talking about our church, the Christian church, Protestant church in our country, in America today. If we take a few steps back, I gotta wonder if we're not focusing way too much on the frosting. And not on the cake. And see, here's the thing. If we focus on the frosting, there's a lot of things that happen that are just not right. Oh man, am I feeling this? <laughs> <laughs>
approach to church and allows us to, to just have people who, you know, are part of the church and we're glad to have them be a part of the church, but they're really not there to, to do anything for serving people. They're not there to feed, feed the sheep or do the things that they're there to you know, sort of get through the service and, and, and focus on the frosting stuff, fellowship hour, right? being with the friends and doing that kind of that frosting stuff. <coughs> When we do that, we kind of lose, we lose our perspective a little bit. You know, the other thing that happens too is <coughs> we eat too much of this frosting and, oh man, we get the gripes after a while. I'm expecting a good, uh, good case of the gripes later on today. And, and isn't that interesting how our churches are like that now? And we talk about how our churches are in the doldrums, how we're living, the membership is dwindling, and this and that. And it's funny, if you look at those churches that are growing, they're the ones that are trying to focus not on the frosting, but on the cake, the things that Jesus told us to do. And here's the other thing. As sweet as this stuff is, I was going to try to finish this last one, but I don't think I can do it. As sweet as this is short term, Long term, there's just not much to it. And, and if we're focused on just feeding ourselves, I mean, how are we going to feed other people? I mean, if we're focused, we focus our churches on, well, I want my church to be like this, blah, 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 this kind of music and this kind of sermon and this kind of thing and got to have these things, blah, blah, and this is what I need for my church. Where's the feeding? You know what I'm saying? Where are we saying, where are we saying, we're going to get people in here, we're going to help them? No, that kind of attitude is feeding myself. And it's feeding myself on this stuff, is what it is. And see, God doesn't bless that. Well, he might bless it for a little while. That first bite I took tasted like a blessing. I told you it tasted good, and it really did. And I'm going to tell you about the 30th bite right here. I don't think I could choke that on a spoon. Long term, it, this just isn't any good. See, we've got to get back to the kingdom. Well, my brothers and my sisters, i got to tell you this. Making that shift from frosting and, uh, uh, and, and reveling in the frosting to enjoying the cake is, is, is a really tough thing for a lot of congregations to do. Some of them can't do it, and some of them die not being able to do it. They cease functioning, they cease existing because they can't do the things that Jesus asked them to do. Get out there, be a part of people's lives, get to know them, serve them, don't ask for anything in return. A lot of churches can't do that. And a lot of churches, so many churches, I think, have been focusing on the frosting, but this is where we get some of these, some of these people of a certain age, my generation and younger, are really interested in church. Because they see things like, you know, these, these rigid forms, and they see things like always obsessed with money, and they, they question where's the spirituality, and where is the stuff that Jesus fought for and died for? Where is that in, in, in the frosting? Oh, it's there! Don't get me wrong. It's hard to see when all you see is this. It's hard to see. And I guess that's why, you know, I got done talking uh, this last week with uh, some of the board, some of the PEC members. Um, there, there are two from the, the south and two from the north, so four PEC members in all. And I had just this great, great opportunity to sit down and talk about what we're doing here. And how this brave little congregation made that decision back in 2010 to shift the culture from this stuff. It doesn't mean we get rid of the frosting. We still, you look around, we still have all the things that I would say are frosting on the cake that make things worthwhile. Enjoy the music, enjoy the choir, um, enjoy the fellowship opportunities around here, but also make room for the cake. And that was a decision that you decided to do. Now let me tell you something, we are getting the blessings. We are seeing the blessings. Come on, come on down to come to dinner on the 27th. Come see it. Come see that energy. Come see how people are seeing the church in a different way. And enjoy that time. Because let me tell you something. 
This doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work very well. Let us pray. Gracious one God, we pray for individuals who focus on the frosting of our churches. We have that perspective skewed. We also pray for pastors who are stupid enough to eat two and a half containers of frosting in order to make a sermon point. We pray, Lord, that you might help us understand that while these things are good and in their place, when they're, when they're out of control and they're, they're, they're not in the right perspective, they actually tear down the kingdom. Help us to understand that we don't have to be afraid of making changes in this, in this perspective. We don't have to be afraid of, of you know, what, my, what is my church going to look like if we do things differently. Especially, I pray, Lord, that you bless uh, our efforts to feed your sheep. And not ask for anything in return. This great experiment of radical hospitality is getting back to what hospitality in a radiant sense really means. Looking people, serving them eye to eye, heart to heart, face to face. Thank you for that blessing of this congregation who has the heart and the generosity to want to do that. Thank you, Lord, for the spirits who are enriched by that. Thank you, Lord. The way you blessed us in the community. And we pray, Lord, that we might continue to feed you. <laughs> Lord, we lift up to you the joys of our hearts. We thank you for connections. We call shut in 